Welcome to Hook on Headwaters. I'm Dave. And I'm Dan. And I'm Jerry. All right, and today we're going to talk about Headwaters Lake. We're going to give you a fishing update, um, lake, lake conditions. Our main topic for today will be tips for fishing Headwaters Lake. We've got a lot of visitors coming from Oof. all over the country. It is prime time, so i um, going to try and help you out with giving you some, some basic tips and things to do, things not to do, and both from a uh, a boating and a kayak perspective. So let's sure. let's start out with uh, fishing and lake conditions. And uh, Dan, what's uh, what's it been like uh, this past few days? Well, it's been kind of up and down with what what I'm catching. I have some days that are we catch big numbers, and other days it's not as many. And then some days we'll get big ones, other days we won't. It's kind of a typical fishing thing. Yeah, it doesn't, right, right. doesn't really give you any information. Um, I think the fishing's been overall good, wouldn't you say, Jerry? I think it's been real good. We haven't caught the fish this year. I don't think I've caught the fish or customers have caught the fish this year that are, like we had one last year that was 11, 14, and then we probably had 20 fish that were over 10 pounds. And then, you know, it goes, you know, then eight pounds, it's like 30 fish. I don't think we've had the typical, as many big fish. I'd agree. Yeah. But yeah. we've had a lot of quantity and quality fives and sixes, a lot of them, which tells me that this is like a new generation of the fish. This is mm -hmm. like fish that are okay. four and five years old that are now coming up. Like in the areas that I'm fishing right now, they're there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to spawn. Right. right. So you're not catching any small fish. Every fish you catch is four pounds, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they're all loaded. Some of them have already laid. Some of them are getting ready to lay. Yeah. And um, some of them will lay again. Right. But right. Th the whole thing with them right now, I think, is they're scattered. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not concentrated like they were this time last year. And they're not in the same areas this time yeah. this year yeah. as they were last year. They're in a whole different part of the lake right now. But um, I think they're in full swing. And I think. Uh, if you can get anywhere around deep water irrigation canals that have been there the whole time the property's been there, mm -hmm. adjacent to that, whether it be flats, farmland flats, you're gonna catch them. Okay. Yeah, I think Jerry's right with that. <coughs> uh, what he's saying is that, you know, the, the small buck bass, a lot of them, they already moved up and they're fanning beds, they're waiting on the females. So That's right. Look for some transition areas, at little highways. Um, so, but like what you're saying, that the places I wrecked them last year, I caught two fish since the summer. Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's crazy. So. And I'm going to tell you why I think that is. We never got any cold weather this year until Christmas Day. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Usually we get the first cold weather around Thanksgiving. So that gives you another four weeks or so there that that hydrilla gets to die yep. down yeah. and die out. Yeah. It's not that I don't think the fish are there. You can't get to them. Can, right. Perfect, perfect example is the kayak launch, which is the northwest corner. Now, typically this time of year, you're able to launch and head head east. Can't do that anymore. Well, I, hydrilla. Well, I think you, got, I you, think, have, you have to paddle across. I think the areas that had like mild to medium hyd hydrilla, it's died out. Yeah. But the places, I mean, and Dan will tell you, there's places in June, July, and August that are four acres, ten acres, twelve acres that are just matted completely over, mm -hmm. and you can't get to them. So, so you're waiting on that cold weather. So you can get in the areas and fish. That that cold weather never came. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It won't be here this week. <laughs> so, right. Like right now we're record, look. Well, you can see we're out here short snow shoes. Record hot weather for the month of February in Florida. I, Near 90 in this area. I can tell you that the fish I caught yesterday and and the day before that are oh, some buck bass, some yeah. some long yeah. skinny yeah. Yeah. male fish, and then you got some fish that are four pounds to nine pounds that are loaded and they've got like little splits in their tails and they're like sore they're they're, they're doing their thing right now right right they're yeah. wide open right now yeah so I, I i would agree with jerry i think something else has changed is the hurricanes that we had there was areas that were topped out coming into the spawn last year topped out with hydro that are devoid of grass now so um it's changed a lot of of I think it changed a lot of the, and then there were some areas that near where I fished last year, you know, uh, where the hydrilla wasn't there, but it's there this year because we had high water, the grass That's just right. grew and grew and grew. And then during a hurricane, some places got, it got ripped out of the bottom yeah. and other places it stayed. That's so right. then we had really hydrilla, high, you know, deep hydrilla 
in areas we didn't have it last year. So I've been kind of having to shuffle some things around. I'm fishing totally different than I was last year. And you know, it's like I tell customers right now, I just told them yesterday, I was like, you, and these are customers that have fished with me two, three years prior. And you know, they're catching 60 fish and they never move in four hours and they go through eight dozen shiners. Yeah. And they come back and they expect that. I think the lake right now is in a different cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think the I fish are in different areas than they were th last year. Now, with that being said, you can still have 30 and 40 fish days. You just have to be where they are. And what I tell people is you can't, you, you have to be paid. Listen, if you have to sit 15, 20 minutes waiting on that fish to hit that shiner and it's a six pound fish, that's a good day. Yep. You can't, you can't be reeling them in throwing them out reeling them in you just got to be patient right now i think these fish are scattered i think they're prowling and i think these areas with these flats adjacent to this deep water they're just using them as highways in and out and you just gotta wait for one to come by and see it and if they do they'll smash it yep uh, you know that's something else <coughs> expectations too jerry and i get a lot of people and so do you with the kite mm -hmm. yeah. You got to remember, guys. Yes, it is headwaters. It is rated in the top lakes in the country, but it's not a gimme. You got to work at it. Right. Some days are great. I had a day to, today. My people caught like f between 40 and 45 fish, but nothing over three and a, three, three and a quarter. We caught a lot of fish. We caught a lot of dinks too. But just a few days ago, we had a, in four hours we caught like 15 or 18. It was a tougher day. So. Uh, you know, work on your expectations just like at home where you got to work at home, you got to work here too. But the difference is, I think you have a better probability of having a banner day. These fish are there for one reason only to spawn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are on them flats getting ready to spawn, they're full of eggs, and they're anywhere from four pounds. The biggest one I've caught up there where I'm at right now is a 9 4. My customer did on Valentine's Day. But we've caught a lot of sevens, a lot of six and a halfs, and every one of them are just yoked up. I mean, they're full of roe. And if you catch a male fish, he's all beat up and skinny yeah. and his tail's beat up, and that's because he's in there on that bed, you know, taking care of business. Yeah. But I think um, if you get anywhere, you know, close to adjacent deep water to shallow water flats, it's the farm flats is what I see, is where the, what used to be farmland. Mm -hmm. And that's, well, where no, they, I, that's where they seem to be. I've been now, he tore, now, you tore them up the other day on them yeah. crankbaits. I mean, he, it's like 60 he caught. Yeah, that guy's got 66 last. I mean, right. he yeah. just yeah. messed them up out there on that flat, yeah. on that crankbait. Yeah, um, Mark and his son-in-law, uh, Clay, they're down from Tennessee, and, and Eddie and his boy fish with you. Um, I'll put pictures up. Yeah, well, I'll put it to you this way. They did so good with Dan and so good with me, they're already booked for 16th and 17th of next year. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> February. Remember, yeah. mind your expectations, guys. It isn't always this way. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of it has to do, yes, with adjacent to deep water. Or it doesn't have to be. I've been fishing some... Uh, I've been fishing different areas like a, than what I was last year. I guess when I say eight, deep water, eight foot, eight foot. Yeah. Not these 24 foot holes, but like eight, nine yeah. foot. Well, I mean, they're still there too. Yeah. I just, I've been fishing different stuff, more open water stuff. Now it's like a, you were talking about tips. <clears throat> like the thing that I see a lot with a lot of my customers, not all of them, but a lot of them, we get a lot of folks that come down from Northern lakes and they are not used to fishing Florida. And they, they want to throw at something, whether it's cattails, lily pads, Hydrilla that they can see. Look, look behind you. Fish behind you. Sometimes you're better off to fish open water mm -hmm. than you are to fish and cast at certain things. Um, and that's one tip that I would say: don't be afraid to fish. Cast where you don't see something to cast at. Investigate. Like if you're fishing a, uh, an area that's wide open, there's multiple areas like this all over the lake, from the north end to the south end. This, they're uh, that are like flats with hydrilla in them, look for the holes in the hydro. The look for the pockets, yep. yeah. The bigger pockets, yep. the small pockets, but focus on the pocket. That's where I catch a lot of fish. Yeah. Uh, you know, but now comparing what I'm doing with Jerry, I'm getting a lot more numbers. Not always. Well, I'm, but I, I, I'm getting my average size is smaller than yours. Well, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Anybody that watches the channel knows I'm, I'm, I'm about 99% shiner. If you want to book a trip from us, 
and you want to fish head or you want to fish artificial. I mean, that's that's this is where you want to go. I had a guy yesterday that was shiner fishing, man. He was catching five and six pounders, and um, if we got one minute of laps, he was picking up a crankbait, trying to throw a crankbait in 18 foot of water. I mean, he just couldn't help himself. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. listen, if you guys want to do that, man, this is the guy to do it. I mean, he knows how to fish this lake artificial. Sometimes. If you want to catch a <laughs> fish with, if you want to catch a shiner fish, man, then, you know, either one of us are good. But that's that's kind of where I'm at, and that's kind of where he's at. But, um, so if yeah. So if someone's coming down, let's talk about tips. We started, <laughs> started the conversation. I know. Um, so they want to do, someone's coming down, they want to do some shiner fishing. A couple of tips. Right, right now, right for now. right now. You know, it's a little different this year than it was last year, but I would say right now, right now, just to keep it simple and basics, these fish are on these flats right now. Yep. They are all over these flats. I mean, like like Dan was out the other day actually fishing crankbaits with a, with a drift bag and had a shiner just kind of floating behind the boat as he was drifting and they were catching them. Yeah. yeah. So what I was doing is using a drift sock. Yeah. Or a sea anchor. Some guys would call it a sea anchor. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually it was, uh, Jerk baits, hard jerk baits have been doing real well on hard jerk baits. So I, th I think if you want to come here and you want to fish shiners, keep it simple. You've got the south pitch, you've got the north pitch, anywhere where you can see that kind of sandy road bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shallow and it's water. It's easy to get to, right? Any You're place. Right down. Right down here. I mean, as soon as you go down the S Canal, right yeah, down here, you have the south on pit the and the north pit. Yeah. And on the east side of it, you're going to see where that, I mean, it's like yeah. super shallow, white sandy bottom. So be careful going in there. But I mean, any places like that that you can find any kind of hysons, water cabbage, water lettuce, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, hydrilla, fish anything like a corner, a pocket, any any kind of V, anything like that on the side of these deep deeper ditches and canals, and you're gonna catch bass with shiners. And if you wanna catch them on artificial, I'm gonna leave that up to him. <laughs> also, expectations on shiners. It is hard to get shiners. Right Jerry now. We're here all the time, and we are having problems getting shiners. Um, yeah, bad. Worse than, is low. Worse yeah. than ever. I'll tell you all that right now. This is, I just talked to the guy I've been dealing with for almost a decade, and he told me, Jerry, this is the worst year I've ever had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things are hard right now. The, the shiners are spawning. I actually had several shiners yesterday I took out of my bait well that were spitting eggs out. Shiners are spawning, they spawn deeper. We've got, as you can see here, all this wind, we got cold temperatures, and for the next two or three weeks, just expect they're gonna be hard to get. If you come here with your own boat and you're wanting to fish shiners, they're gonna be hard to get. Yep. Okay. One, um, one tip I tell my clients, and remember I'm in, I'm in the kayak, is fish slow. Now, majority of the, well, all my trips, just about, are artificial, pretty much worms. Mm -hmm. And uh, we might be fishing some crawl, some crawl. You've been catching some good ones though. I've been seeing some good ones, ones. But it's like slow, guys. And I know many, myself, we need to keep from casting and cranking. Casting, it. it's it's a slow, you mm -hmm. got cast and really do like the one turn, stop. Mm -hmm. Wait it, take a couple of deep breaths <laughs> and then turn again. And and uh, that's that's but, been working for uh, me and my client. All right. So Dan, any uh, any more tips? Uh, boating tips. I've seen some. I'm sure Jerry's yes. seen it lately too. I saw a guy idle almost a half a mile the other day. <laughs> a lot of throttle and just bogging down. He was loaded up with hydrilla. So two things: when you sit down, try to know where you're sitting down. When I mean sitting down, coming out off plane. Try to look over the side of the boat, see if the water looks dark. Don't sit down, say if you're, uh, some of these open flats have tremendous amount of hydrilla and it's only about eight to 10 inches under the surface. If you sit down there, you're not getting back up on point. That's a good point. Look for ditches, because yeah. there's east and west running ditches, find a ditch. And then if you're, if you're clogged up, or not, I'm not talking about your water intakes, I'm talking about if you're bound up with grass on the lower unit, you just don't feel like you got no power, take it out of gear and look and see you may have about literally 200 pounds of hydro in there. Yeah. Put the motor in reverse and blow it off. Do that two or three times. You're, you gotta goose it a bit to try to blow that crap off. Um, but you'll wanna find an area where the, the hydro isn't topped out and then get up on plane quickly. 
and run and then hopefully you have a water pressure gauge on your boat so you can watch your water pressure that yeah. would be a boating tip i see that fairly <laughs> regularly uh guys they just don't if you come from way up north where you don't have hydrilla you don't know so i'm not going to say ha ha because i would go up there and rip my lower unit off and you'd say ha ha you idiot you know that's, that close to the bank <laughs> yeah i would yeah, think so. i would think out of every for for people that aren't here that don't live here that's probably the best I mean that is probably hands down the best tip because because like Dan's saying people that aren't from here listen this is not Lake Erie okay this ain't Lake you know whatever this a lot of vegetation here you're going to get it in your motor you got to stop it completely put it in neutral put it in reverse and I mean I mean you got to get it and get that stuff broke free and then what i i call them runways and then what you got to do is you have to look for areas where there is no hydrilla and there's just an open shot and you can run from 45 50 yards right. and get that thing up but if you're in that stuff if you're in that stuff as long as you stay up on plane and trim that motor up you can run just about through all of that stuff but like dan saying if you lay down in it you're stuck yeah. you're gonna have to idle until you find a canal or a ditch or something clean that motor off in that area mm -hmm. it'll run where you need to run while you're idling but as soon as you find a runway or a clean area clean that motor off goose it get out of there and once you're up on plane you'll be fine and, and turn around and make sure you're spitting water <laughs> I have, like Dan said, I have a, I have a water pump pressure gauge. Right. I mean, it shows you know, I'm throwing 20 pounds, and if it's you know, not, take a look. And sometimes, you know, I get distracted, and if I'm not paying attention, and it goes all the way to zero, it after about oh, 10 seconds, it will beep and start, yeah. and the motor will stop. I would carry a little a little bristle brush, yeah. like, a, like a toilet brush, yeah, yeah, and just, just to clear out in case not to be, in case you do suck up. Mm -hmm. But it, as long as you're on plane running 25, 30 miles an hour through that north flat or south or wherever you are, you're, you're, you're fine. Yeah. So another tip, when you're looking for a way to get up on plane, if you find a small, say, a round shaped hole in the hydrilla and you don't have enough distance to get up, um, get over to one side of the hole. And when you power up, get a nice, fairly hard left turn. You need to know your boat before you do this. Don't come down here and do this and throw yourself or somebody outside of the boat. You turn left, a hard left turn, it'll get your boat up on plane because the way the prop turns, That's right. it gives you more lift right. on one side of the boat yeah. than the other. Yeah. So it'll jump up on plane a lot easier. So, okay. But you need to know your boat. Know your boat before you try that. Practice at home. That's good stuff right <laughs> there, man. Absolutely. Um, so if you're coming down, once again, um, what baits might you want to bring? I, now, I get, when I... When I get clients, hey, what? So I want to bring my own lures. Well, bring whatever lure you, whatever your favorite lure is. It, it may work. Confidence However, right, yep. right, the basics. Just for me, bring some sort of speed worm, some yep. worm with a tail on it, a fluke, a fluke. Mm -hmm. um, I I take a. Um, I like starting with top water, so I generally carry in my kayak. I got four or five rods: mm -hmm. worm, fluke, cinco. Cinco. Well, that was the next one I was going to say. That's, da that's, that's Dan's my, big that's deal right there. That's my follow-up bait. So if I if I miss a bite, I get my Cinco out. And True story. Right if, you, if you top water and it blows yeah. up and yeah. you miss him, throw that Cinco in there. He'll come there. right back and grab <laughs> it. That's right. That's yep. right. And then, and then maybe a chatter bait if I've got the, the five yeah. rod. But that's my basic setup. For, yeah. uh, for Dan, are you still anyway. catching them on them square bills, them 1.5s? I haven't been throwing square bills lately. Just those... Okay, I'll tell you kind of basically how I start my day. Um, I do, I'm doing a lot of combo trips where I have artificial and live bait. Um, I'll pull into my area first thing in the morning. I usually start with some sort of walking bait. If it's calm, I like a quieter, and I've told you, I'll check back other videos we've talked about top water, like quieter baits. If it's windy, I'll get one with a, one that's got a louder rattle in it, and probably say a pop or a devil's horse. Yep. I mean, that's kind of an easy thing. That's what I like. Yep. Um, then from there, after the wind starts blowing a bit, or the day's getting long, oh, but by the way, I always throw out some shiners as I'm trolling the motor and around. I got a couple shiners out behind us, so I keep my folks going pretty pretty good with that. Um, then I'll, if I feel like the top water bite's not doing good, because uh, I'll fish that as long as they'll bite it, I'll have, we'll keep fishing it. Then I'll go yeah. subsurface, and it's usually going to be 
weather dependent as mainly wind. Um, if it's really windy, I'll probably go with like a spinner bait or a chatter bait. If it's not as windy, I'll do something more like a swim jig and a swimming worm. And on a lot of these windier days, guys, I've been doing very well on hard jerk baits. I was using suspending jerk baits, and I prefer those when it's we get water temperatures in the 50s and 60s. But it's been much warmer. I didn't even look at it today. Yeah. It's got to be. What'd you 70s. have today? What was I it? I didn't even think to look, but it's in the 70s. Um, the water, the water, water temperature. temperatures. Yeah. Oh. Um, when it's colder, I'll use the uh, the suspending jerk bait. But I was having problems with my folks getting their st the uh, hung in the grass a lot. So yeah. I went with a floating jerk bait with a smaller lip on it. Uh, stuff with a lot of flash. Hit and that and it just comes right back to the top, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it'll float. And uh, I find with jerk baits, the windier it is, the better I'm doing. You bet you, brother. The other day, last Friday, Jerry <laughs> pulled up on us and we were talking because we had uh, four we had guys four in the, the boat way. at one time, son. We were pulling up. We had... It looked, I saw it from it all the distance. Like I was like, wait, hold on. I was like... Yeah, it looked like a circus. I said, they got four fish <laughs> over there, man. Yeah, I think it was Mark flipped one in the boat. And it would, and Shiner got another one. Yeah. I'm <laughs> trying to help him that. He's like, oh, shoot, he got one here. Clay's in the front. He's hooked up on a jerk bait. And then he's like, oh, man, that one's going up. And it, he's got two rods in one hand, two fish. <laughs> it's not always like that. Remember right. expectations. Yeah, that's right. But there's like one little spot that just. I had a up. place this week, man, where I went and I was like, there's just nothing here, man. But I called him yesterday. Yeah, and, and then I went back the next, and then I went back the next day, and I was like, it was like gangbusters, and I'm like, yeah. it's, and it, don't get discouraged. It's, I find that a lot of these fish are not laying. It's not like you go spec fishing or bluegill fishing. There's a hundred fish laying all together. You know, they're schooled mm -hmm. up. These fish are prowling. Yeah, I mean, they are literally prowling, and you may go 15, 20 minutes, and there might not be a fish, but then you'll have. Whether it be jerk baits or whether it be shiner fishing, you'll have boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And it's because I feel like they're actually coming through in pairs, man. But they're, and, and so you might have, we have one where I've been, we got one where I've been fishing. It's got a white, big old white sore on the side of his head. It looks like a golf I ball. I think I caught one of them too. <laughs> the crazy thing is, huh. man, is you'll see this joker every day. So what that tells me is these fish aren't laying in here. They're prowling, but they're residential. Right. So they're using these flats. These You'll have a big old pile of grass and hysons and, and water cabbage over here with hydrilla. And then you'll have another one over here with some sawgrass in it. And they're just like prowling from area. Yeah. And they're, it's like highways. Yeah. And Not it's far. And, and it, Not far. Brother, from, the, from where they live in the summer to where they bed yeah. in the winter is 500 yards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, man, they're here. And uh, for some of you who are not familiar with the channel, we we do um, we have put out several uh, navigating the lake video. Uh, we got a lot of great feedback from that uh, from that video, mm -hmm. that series of videos. So um, do yourself a favor, check those videos out, and help you at least give you um, an idea where to where to go, where not to go, and give you a good visual of well, it, the route. In regards to baits, if you want to maybe uh, get started with a, a set of baits, American Bait Works, the company that uh, helps us with the channel, um, we've collaborated, collaborated with them and put together some bait boxes. So they call Headwaters Bait Boxes. You can get them at AmericanBaitWorks.com. If you use Headwaters 15 as a coupon code, you get 15% off. Now those boxes are set up for top water, they are uh, pitching, and they are a, ge a, a general box. So um, again, they've got um, baits that we've collaborated and uh, we think they'll work. Not only here, it's but they'll the, work in, Well, it's really, all the surrounding lakes, lakes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, if, you know, if you look, oh, what should I get? Maybe this is a good place to start. It's just kind of a combo paper. pack, a little bit of everything. Yep, yeah, in, in, in one box. Yep. yep. Okay. And uh, that, that hooked on, that uh, Headwaters 15 coupon code is good for anything they sell. Terminal tackle, all their baits, and their Halo fishing rods. 15% it is. Uh, Which are super good. The Halo rods really are really good. good. Rods. We got a video coming up in a yeah. week or two where we're going to uh, be fishing with them and um, doing a review on some of the Halo rods. I use them uh, in my uh, my kayak business. Uh, they're, I use the medium heavy fast tip um, I find I, I found with the halo rods that the, their guides seem to be more planted yeah they're yeah. they're better it's a for good sure. tip right there if you're coming down here and your rods are exposed I'm telling you this road 
Yeah. You, I, I'm sure most of you have heard all the stories, all the complaining, all the stuff about our infamous <laughs> gray, <laughs> our Felsmere gray. Road. A lot of dust, so um, get yourself some rod socks. Uh, uh, then put the rods in the, either put them in the put them in the front box seat. Or put them in the truck. Yeah, yeah. Don't, I don't leave them on the deck. Don't leave, leave them out. No. No. no, they will. This, this, it is a Here's, very fine dust, and it's going to get into everything. Here's the problem with the road: is when you come in here early mornings and there's no wind, and there's been no wind all night in February, January, February. Yeah. You've got all this dew, yep. so your boat's already wet. Even if you've got it covered up, it doesn't matter. This stuff's like water; yep. it gets in everything. And what happens is that dust turns. And it's like chalkboard eraser dust. Yeah, right. It is. If you exactly. leave that stuff on the bow of your boat with that morning dew and that dust, it just turns into grit. Yeah, and so, it will destroy your reels. It, yeah. Experience. <laughs> so cover them up. Cover it up. Put it in the truck. Put them in the truck, cover yeah, them up, put them in raw lockers, don't leave them on the bow of your boat. Yeah. Then put a cover on your boat. Put a cover yeah, on put your cover boat on if you want your boat to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to necessarily be a rotable cover. Because you don't have to drive 50 miles an hour down the dirt road, you don't. which happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm not going to get into complaining. <laughs> it is dangerous, however. Um, just something what I see a lot of guys, I, actually, I happen to have a rotable cover. cover. I can tow it down the, the highway with it. Um, just one you can, if you can at least pull it over and tie it down to keep the dust out of your boat um, Tie it down to stop at the end of the road put it on and then right. before you pull out of the parking lot Yes, I know you're tired. Do yourself a favor put the cover on the boat cover it up. You'll be happy you did. I don't I try it without one time You won't be happy. Under, under your fingernails. I don't this have stuff a it's nasty. I don't I don't have a cover <laughs> And, uh, I, I have a flats boat. I don't have a cover, but I go to the car wash in Felsmere every morning before my trips, and I go to the car wash every afternoon after my trips. <laughs> I wash them before my trips and after my trips, yeah, just yeah. because I take care of my stuff. Yeah. But you have to, if you got a cover, use it. Yeah. Don't worry about how much time it takes. Use it. Yeah. So uh, quickly, want to cover kayaking for my kayaking brothers and sisters out there. The, ki the official Headwaters Kayak Launch, which is the northwest corner. Two miles down the road. Two miles down the road. We're at the boat ramp here. Um, is open. Uh, I spoke to um, St. John Water Management. Thumbs up. Thank you, St. John. They've yeah, it looks cleared better. out. You can, you can make your way out. You probably have to push out past this. There's a little sign there. If you get past the, the sign, there is open water. You can drop your drives and go on. <laughs> now, as I said earlier, if you... You, can, you can't go east anymore, it's just too much hydrilla, uh, without paddling anyway. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I'll go, I'll travel a bit south and then kind of work my way around. Or just fish that west bank. That west bank has always been productive. You can go all the way down, past the Indian Mound, to the east-west canal. It's about a three mile trek, so make sure you got strong legs if you're pedaling. You got a battery that's going to bring you back. And by all means, watch the weather. You may have the wind and you're back in the morning. Remember, at the end of the day, you're coming into the wind and it could be a long, long hard. Yeah, that's the problem is it's a nice it's ride going up. down, but you got to Watch come back. That wind. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We predominant we have predominantly we have a north northeast wind for the most part. And it's nice going down in the morning. <laughs> but it's a little Start bit rough going back. Be be very careful. Where put a flag on. On your kayak, wear high visibility hat. I noticed this week there was quite a few boys down there, so I knew that I knew that the, the kayak launch must yeah, have right. opened up because there were. Yep. But yeah. they had, hey, this one guy. I mean, he did it right way. He had like LED, LED green, light. Yeah. like green yep. lights oh, yeah, made yeah. into his kayak. Yeah, yeah so kits. For I that. mean, this dude had. I mean, but you saw him way down. You're like, what the heck is that? And you got down there, like, damn, that's the dude in the kayak. Yeah. And so, you can you can launch the kayak yeah. from here. You can launch it right here, absolutely. Just, so the the, 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 the it's S just a long behind us. It's just a long trek down and, that S canal. Uh, yeah. So about a quarter mile down, there is an area to the east, to the left. The bay. Fish. We call it the bay. I've got plenty of fish yep. out there. You go a little further down, there is an opening again to the east. Sometimes it closes on you. It I closed. Think it was close today. Once it closed while I was out there. <laughs> <laughs> 
called these. I almost told these guys to come get me. Tell these me guys out. just had. We just had a guy here a few minutes yeah, ago. He got right. out of his boat and he went to get his truck and he yeah. come back and it was sucked in. And he's like, yeah, I don't know what to do. But who, the ramp was. Who fixed so it? Sucked in. Mr. <laughs> hero here. Which I got a video. I'm going to show it. <laughs> I got a video of that. But anyway, we've got all these floating vegetation islands, so they can be some. They move an around. An issue. Um, if you use this canal, I, I would. You should be an experienced kayaker. Ooh. Now I'm going to speak to the boaters. When you see a kayaker in slow the down canal, before you get to yeah, him, either slow down <laughs> or I prefer you just run by me on plane. The okay. wake that you create is much lower than you coming up on me, which I've had this done, and you just stop. Now you create this wake. Big this wake. Wheel, this, this wave. So out. either go by you on a plane or stop far enough yep. back that you are idling when you yep. come and by I me. I appreciate for those guys. I really, really thank and appreciate those yep. guys that do that. One thing you got to remember, S Canal, passing vessels, you must pass off plane. Oh, that's you, right. Sorry. So yep. can't pass the kayak guys. We're not supposed to that's pass right. other boaters. Um, it just happens, I'm sorry, it just happens so often that a guy just yeah. barrels. Bottom. Everybody's in a hurry to go fishing. Here's a problem to, with us boaters. We're already in a big hurry. Yeah, yes, no. we got a big fast boat. But if you're if I, you're not at a, almost a dead idle, you're throwing a wake. And if you're kind of under power, kind of down in the hole, you're throwing a big wake. That's right. And that guy, he's got he's got yep. eight hundred or a thousand dollars worth of tackle in his kayak that you could dump in the water that he could lose. So, so that's one thing. Kayak dudes with the dog on troll motors, brother. If you're going wide open in your kayak, I almost have to throw a wake on you to get by. That's so right. So if I'm coming up behind you or a boat's coming up behind Stop. you, you're wide open. Slow down for a second. I'll idle by slowly and not throw a wake on you. Yep. Then I'll be on yep. out of here. And that's, a good, that's another good tip and a good point. Because here's the deal, man, is I stop 100 yards yeah. before I get to I mean, I'm idling, been idling, talking to my customers, idling, idling, idling when I go past kayakers. Now, if that kayaker looks at me and goes, yeah. then I get up and go. Yep. But like yep. Dan's saying, you cannot stop Don't right stop behind them. Me. I mean, you're Don't just stop. throwing this big, right. huge roller up on them. Yeah. So you're either, responsible for your weight. So you either... I don't even think about going by them on a plane. Yeah. I just stop, man. I just stop. And I mean, I stop 500 feet from them. And I just idle right next to them. Get on past them a ways. Because I mean, you don't want to sink one of these guys in this kayak. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, simple. Yeah, sure. You got to be careful. You got to be respectful. And remember, most kayakers have video, have video cameras running. And if you yep. flip me, you're you're gonna, gonna get. I'm coming. I'm I'm, I'm gonna put you, that on headwater sight. Be on video, and uh, you're legally responsible. You are responsible yeah. for your weight. So that's right. Don't forget. Just take your time, man. Them fish. Yep. It, listen, if you're that late. It's already too late. Yeah. <laughs> Just take your time. If 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 you ain't here yeah. When all them other trucks are already, it's already too late. Just take your time and just. And right now, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop those of you who are going to comment. Well, kayakers shouldn't be in the calf canal. No, we mm -hmm. have every right to be in this lake and fish mm -hmm. this lake. Just Listen, there's one out. There's something so, I've seen with this lake that I have not seen in the in the seven years I've been guiding. Yep. All of us, every single one of us. I don't care if it's a phoenix, if it's a falcon, or or if it's a tracker gator. We're all here for the same reason. Yep. We're out yep. here to enjoy this, yep. to yep. fish, yep. to enjoy this. We don't need to be arguing and fighting with one another. Just everybody be respectful and just take our time. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. Thank you. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. Me too. <laughs> just be respectful. That's it. <laughs> well, anything else to add? No, I think this is worth it. I think enough. that covered yeah, it. We covered <laughs> just about everything that anybody. Lot, folks. If they're still with us right now, they're. If they still with us, they like us. <laughs> So, Sorry guys. Hope you learned something, pick something up. Come on down, enjoy enjoy your time here. It's a fa it's still a fabulous lake. Yep. Um, the chances of you getting your PB or good, they go high, yeah. scale. When if you call me, they're really good. <laughs> there you go. Book your trip. If you call him, they're really good. Still time to book your trips. The spawn here is right now. This doesn't happen, but it's gonna. Yeah, we're gonna be it's spawning gonna be into long, March. Yeah. April. We'll spawning into April. I caught one last year, nine so, six, still loaded. So plenty so, of time to get yeah. down here. Good weather, and I book your trip. These guys, you want to do a little something different? Kayak and give me a buzz. Um, we'll put you on fish, and you have a fabulous time. You know, January and February are great. I mean, obviously, but March and April 
everybody backs off and goes away and the fishing's still phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. And the pressure, yeah, yeah. the pressure is, is three quarters of yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah. I, that's a question I get a lot. Absolutely. What's the best month? Well, depends February on what in March. And then yeah. now we have 120, 150 boats in the water. Yep. Um, that isn't, Jerry's right, that's not the only time when people say, what's the best? Well, now it's the best, but you can have tough days too with the, uh, you get a really I, harsh front. I think you still, like I said, I caught, I had a customer last year catch one in here, nine, six loaded yeah. in, in, yeah. in April. Yeah. Yeah. And there was 25 trucks in the parking lot. So you, you have an, a better opportunity to get, yeah, to get into those areas that are just right now really pressured. Right. The fish are starting to relax, it's calmed down, and they're still doing their business, and not, not as many people are there. And you still have an opportunity to catch a good quality fish all the way up until May, yep. sometimes May. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good. All right, folks. I'm going <laughs> to wrap things up. You guys have a blessed week. Thank you for watching. We appreciate the time you take and your consideration. Comment below, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe. It really helps us out. So long, everyone. Thanks, guys. See you.